Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan for another Inside the Birds presented by our friends at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. It is the exclusive Jersey Shore Resort of Inside the Birds. A little bit of a quiet week so far for the Eagles. They've made some moves, but not quiet for Adam and myself. We are digging, we're doing our homework, we're still talking to people, and there is some interesting, there's some intrigue right now uh, surrounding the Philadelphia Eagles. They did make a couple of under-the-radar signings, they did uh, make, uh, they they made sort of transactional news with what's going on with Hassan Reddick situation, we'll talk about that. Yeah. And uh, of course, it's kind of flown under the radar here throughout for the last week, but the Eagles are under investigation from the NFL, so we'll get into that too and what that could mean for the team and its future and we got a little bit of an update on uh on some visits going on from the college prospects so we got we got it all adam and it might be a quiet week for the eagles but we certainly have a lot of intel to get to yeah we're gonna go inside a couple actually a lot of situations that's what we do um yeah look it's uh it's it's quiet now in free agency because all the big names are gone this is when the bargains come as uh, bill polling called it this is filing's basement time this is when Asians sometimes have to tell their, cl- their players, hey, listen, you didn't you didn't go in the first week. You can't expect big money. There are a lot of teams because of the cap. The cash spends are up with a lot of teams. The Titans spent like way more money than probably they probably thought they would be. Their, their cash spend was major, major. Maybe pro- I'd have to look this up, but it's got to be some of the biggest money they've spent in free agency in the history of the franchise. Right. So, but look, it's, you know, they were a bad team. They had to do it. Eagles had a good roster, but not great. And they made some, obviously some big moves. and. Uh, we talked about that last week. Uh, we, we dropped that uh, great Greg Cosell show on, 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 which is one of our most listened to shows of the, of the year. We appreciate, um, we know that cause we didn't just do Eagles in that one. Yes, that was a focus, but we talked about a lot of moves that other teams made. You could get that for agency show on any podcasting platform. Uh, we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we're starting our draft coverage with them next week. Correct. We are, we are going to start draft coverage. I believe we talked about starting off with, uh, what position did we say we were going to do? Cornerbacks? Is that what we said? Or what? No, wide receivers. Corners are, yeah. Wide receivers, receivers yeah. we're going to start off. Oh, with. this is, this is, uh, just talking to a bunch of coaches and front office people last week. I don't want to say it's historic, you know, because people throw that around sometimes when it's not really true, but it's pretty deep. And as one coach told me, uh, that there he goes listen man I, I, you can find starters in the third fourth round in this and we're not saying high grit you know like high and starters but there are starters to be had later in the draft here so right. we'll see what happens yeah i'm i'm looking forward to that greg is always great with the college prospect breakdowns and so yeah uh well if you haven't caught it yet his overall free agency breakdown was up this week on our Patreon and YouTube channels. I'm not Patreon, I'm sorry, our podcast and YouTube yeah. uh, channels. And then, of course, as Adam just mentioned, next week we started with NFL Draft Preview on wide receivers. How did your Discord chat go Wednesday night? What are, what are people still asking you the most about uh, right now? I mean, they're looking. They, they they want corners, outside corners, don't we all, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Yeah, so look, it, 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 the list is not very good. You, you got to look at the trade market. Uh, you know, safeties definitely. We, we mentioned Blackman. He was a guy that was on the Eagles list uh, of the Colts. He's still out there, and you know, maybe his his price is decent. Justin Simmons, we've talked about for two weeks now. Uh, Eagles have had some interest in him. We'll see where the money goes there. The fact that he isn't signed uh, would tell you that typically when 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 I, I get that he turns thirty one this year, but guy's still a good football player. And obviously, he played for Fangio. He's had some. There's some good quotes out there uh, from when he played for for uh, for Vic. So, uh, we'll see what happens there. But you know, I always remind people. I know we brought this up several times over the years. We've had to learn our lesson when it's been quiet. The games are not played till September, and the Eagles in 2017. I just remember. I mean, when they signed. Well, let's put it this way: they made the trade for Darby, right? Yep, and then they signed Legarrette Blunt. I think in May. I could look up the dates, but I believe it was in May. I know it was definitely after the draft. Yeah, who knew? Who knew that Blunt would be that good? Because who he, man, he had been. Yeah, too. yeah, and Chris who Long, knew? by the way, Chris Long was similar. Yeah, Chris, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 that wasn't. Is that was that sixteen or seventeen? I signed him. I forget. No, I was seventeen so also. Yeah. Seventeen, right? So again, you, you relax. They, they they know that they still have holes. They're generally on defense offensively. 
it should be a really good football team. I mean, obviously the offensive line is still you know, in terms of depth, maybe tweaked a little bit and they got to figure out uh right guard. But bottom line is it's about defense. It's about the back end. Uh, we'll get into the Reddick situation, not only what's out there, but we'll explain to you kind of where his contract is and uh, what we hear from league sources, what they're looking for, uh, which is really the, uh, what this is about. Let's, let's call it like it is. That's, that's the bottom line why he's still here. They haven't mm -hmm. found what, the value in the player yet uh, to be traded. Uh, and then you've got the Barkley thing. We're going to talk about that. Uh, as you said, a couple signings and where are their immediate, remember the, the, we're still in the free agency period, free agency period with the draft coming up. The immediate needs is everything at free agency right now. Uh, mm -hmm. it's very hard to find a start unless you make a trade. So we'll, we'll get into that. And then, uh, the losses. Yeah. We really haven't talked about this. Who, who did they lose so far? They actually right. lost a couple of players this week, whether they had a lot of interest in them, uh, to, for some of these guys to return is another story, but, uh, they lost some players. And also there's a bunch of their unsigned UFAs. Got a lot of guys are still out there. Yep. A lot, a lot of guys still out there. It's a, uh, it's a buyer's market still in, in certain spots. Uh, so we'll get into that. All right. So as, uh, we were mentioning your, your discord chat that you did, that was for our Patreon members. We'll have another live stream Great. with them Wednesday night at 8 PM. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, to get involved, if you want, you just go to patreon.com slash inside the birds and you can become a member. Adam, you're also doing a, I like how you're, um, just putting the contracts up there on the Patreon, uh, website. Oh yeah. Yeah. Too. That's good. As stuff. we get them. Yeah, as we get them, I post them and I, I just give you a, I try to give them details everyone could can understand. Like you see some reporters put stuff out there. Nobody knows what the hell it means. <laughs> you know, whether if the agent's texting to them, like, why don't you explain it so people can easily understand it? The first thing you should look at, when could the club get out of the contract? Um, that's the first thing I look at. Th th that's the number one thing. I'll look at cap numbers. Sure, that that's fine. But the the one I want to see what the cash bend is. And because that is the number one criteria for signing a player. What are we paying this player? When can we get out? And the, the contract negotiator will have to deal with the cap. Obviously, that's his job. Mm -hmm. But from a club standpoint, they want to know what the cash is. When could they get out if it doesn't work? Because that was my issue with the the Barkley contract. I know he's still talented and, and, and you know, hopefully for the Eagles it works out. But if it doesn't, they really can't get out after year two. I mean, if they if they don't want to eat a lot of cash, that's the big thing. Cash is king in the National Football League. I'm sorry. You said they can't get out after you, or they can get out after you. Oh, well, they can. They I mean, can they? Yeah. If they if they if they want to eat, let's see. If they want to get out, they would owe them thirteen point five seven million to get out of. Uh, let me see. Uh, no, the cap is thirteen point five seven million. The cash is eleven two five. It's fully guaranteed. Mm -hmm. His cash is uh, base salary fully guaranteed in year two. He is. Uh, He's some per game roster bonuses that are fully guaranteed. So, are they really going to move away from eleven two five, even if he's not good? Oh, I'm I don't sorry. Okay, that. I got you now. You're saying after one year in year two? Yes, gotcha. I if thought it, you were it, saying it looks, after again. year two. Okay, okay. Yeah, if enough. if he sucks, if he sucks in year one, if he just mm -hmm. struggles, he looks like he did, which I can't I can't see because the Giants had a terrible offensive line. They're going to be holes open up for him. Let's just say he gets hurt. They're disappointed with him. They're I hate to say they're stuck with him. But they'd owe low. Uh, they'd owe him eleven two five. That's that's a lot of money to walk away from. I can't see them no matter what. He's here for two years. Bottom line. Yeah, now, yeah, he's got a small guarantee year three. And we've talked about this already. We can move on. But um, th that's what I mean with contracts. I'm glad you brought that up because that's the first thing folks should look at when reporters put stuff on on when they break when they put a lot of stuff out there. They should make it easy for people to understand so the, to help people learn the game better. I I, I can't, that's why I decide. You know what? I'm going to put this stuff on Patreon because. It, it pisses me off when these, these guys put stuff on Twitter. They don't want to tell that they're just, they're like parrots. They just tweet shit. Excuse my language yeah. Yeah. W w without understanding, teach people so they can learn. That's the way I did it. I would ask contract guys, could you help me here? Just, just explain to me what I need to know. Yeah. And, and certainly you get, enough, this... you get enough characters on um, X these days to be able to do that. At least give people. Yeah, an everyone... yeah. So right, actually yeah, the, the situation you're describing right now is somewhat like what the Eagles are going through with James Bradbury, as far as, really struggled in year one of yeah. that extension. And he's on the books for the kind of money where it just may, it's making it tough right now, especially since they don't have a replacement to eat that money. Right. It's just tough because you're already in the books for it. They went through it with Alshon Jeffrey a couple of years ago too. If you have that ready replacement, it makes you okay with eating the money, but right now they don't. And so he remains on the roster, but yeah, I'm sure if they could get out of it easily, they would, it's just not easy. So that's a, that's really a good yeah. base, baseline uh, com comparison right there. 
All right, we're going to talk about this roster bonus that got moved uh, and why it got moved and for who it got moved in one second. First, we're going to pause real quick to hear a word from our friends at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. All right. So we're going to talk about Hassan Redick, who, Adam, had a roster bonus that was due on the third day of the new league year, March 15th, moved to April 1st. Let's go into why that happened. All right, so let, let's, it's out there, it was reported by ESPN, it actually, you know, then it got out this week. So l- let's explain how these these agents talk, th- this stuff happens. So when a club and agents are are talking and they know, you know, they, they know, the, the, the agent knows that the player, you know, wants, wants a new contract and the, the club can't, they're not agreeing. And they know that the club is having talks with other teams. It behooves the agent so the player could get what he wants to be agreeable to move the, the the roster bonus back. It's only a million bucks. You know, if it's if it's a hundred grand, maybe it do, doesn't matter. But paying him a million dollars for a guy who's who may be moved. So it's not like first of all, you you can't do it arbitrarily. The 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 player has to agree to it. Whereas with a signing bonus uh, conversion, like when you do simple conversions, mm-hmm. like you know when a club is owes a guy ten million, they want to convert it to a signing bonus to to help them with proration. You, you you do it over four years. You make it two fifty. You know two two point five million, two point five million, two point five million over four years. You take that cash. That's generally written into the contract. The club has is able to do that. Whereas here, you have to ask the hey, listen. Typical conversation like this is hey, listen, we we need more time. We might be able to get this done if you could. It, it would behoove us if you know it would help us if you could agree to us to to move this back two weeks. So uh, look, the, the word we've had consistently is that the Eagles want more than a second round pick. Uh, now, is there another scenario where yeah, are they willing to take a lesser or, or combination of two picks? We'll have to see. Uh, but I never put percentages on anything, but I just know from some of the covering the Eagles with Roseman's uh, regime uh, how he won't be rolled over. Um, I, I mean, what not just that Zach Ertz situation. Ma- many times over the years, where talking to agents or talking to clubs who deal with Howie, he has a price in mind, and he's going to try to get it. And that's just the way he is. What you should do. This guy's a, this guy. I, I know he's thirty, but no injury history. Really good football player. Two years ago, incredible. Last year, still very good. He's not really slowing down. Why would you take a fourth? Like, I don't know what teams are offering, but if if was if you were Howie, would you take a fourth for him, Redick? I don't know, because sometimes you don't get the value in a trade. Like, you know, Randy Moss should have never gone for a fourth, but sometimes when you just need to move a guy and your time is running out and that's the best you got and you've already moved on from him, you know, mentally or with your team building and they just paid a lot of money to Bryce Huff. Um Yeah, sometimes I think you do see a situation where you just get the best offer that you can. I I don't think it's great business, but it's been done before. We've seen plenty of players move for less than what their value is for a variety of reasons. The Moss one always stands out, but there's been other players that have been dealt. Uh, Michael Bennett Moss for like a five coming off a great year with the Eagles, remember? But the Eagles were like... Who's that? Michael Bennett was with the Eagles. He had what okay. ten or eleven sacks that year. Uh, he they traded him to the Patriots for a five. That wasn't the right value, but the Eagles had moved on. They didn't love everything about that year, and um, so they they took a five. So you'll you'll see that across the league pretty pretty frequently. Moss, just so you know, Moss with the Raiders was slowing down. He 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 just now it wasn't really it, it was a combination of is he regressing and it was just a bad football team. And Belichick took advantage of it. And of obviously, Randy was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. With the Patriots. Now, Hassan's not really slowing down, per se. Sure. I know we talk about this. The new club, if they do move him, it's got to do his contract. And that's obviously part of it. They got to pay him. He's the, 
you're not trading for him and not understanding that he needs to get a new deal. This is why this is why it would be done. Right now, let's 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 because I was talking. This is this is a good subject in in our chat uh, Wednesday night on on Patreon. What if for some reason they don't move him? How do you make this work? Look, obviously they're a better team with them than without them. That that goes without saying. But how do you make this work when you just mentioned Bryce Huff has to start? There's no debate on that. He's making 17 million a season. They were in early on him. They made sure they got him. They paid what they pay. They're paying him what they're paying him. He's got to start. Uh, Sweaty's back at, at 10 million. I get BG doesn't really factor in other than he's just, you know, he's a rotational back and won't play very much. Oh, by the way, they have Nolan Smith who's got to play. So if Redick is back, how do you make this work? Oh, plus, is he going to be able to handle not getting a new deal? Or do you placate him and, and try to say, okay, listen, you're here. You're a property. You're under contract. Do, what do you do to make him happy? Well, I, I'm going to just flip it in reverse here. Because I think you were on, you said this uh, a pot or two ago. And you're right. I don't, I don't, I think the, the glue is out of the, the bottle now. Uh, the genie is out of the, the lamp. Yeah. Like you, you can't make it, in my opinion, you could make it work if all these guys made the same amount of money. But once you devote starting dollars to Bryce Huff, and then once you bring back Josh Sweat on starting defensive end money, you can't have three edge rushers all making high end start and only playing one of them like as a situational guy that doesn't make sense you know it reminds me of when i knew i had been hearing this is a long time ago i had heard that the eagles were going to move on from deshaun jackson after his pro bowl season with with chip kelly and one of the things that really helped me connect the dots was that they came back from the combine and they gave riley cooper an extension riley cooper is an outside receiver only wasn't even that good of one but he was an outside receiver not a slot right tall guy physical guy and if you remember, they tried to sign Jeremy Macklin to an extension, uh, a big long-term deal, but he turned it down. But in my head, I'm thinking, wait a minute. If you're offering Jeremy Macklin, who's also an outside receiver, a lot of money, and you just signed Riley Cooper to a lot of money, you're not paying Deshaun Jackson the money you're paying him to be a slot receiver where he doesn't even fit anyway and it doesn't make sense. Economically, it doesn't make sense. You knew somebody had to go. And then, of course, Deshaun wound up going. And I, I had already started to hear it from sources anyway. So I look at this situation. Economically, it doesn't make sense. Even though I'm the one who's been saying, make it work with Hassan Reddick. Once they gave Josh Sweat that $10 million guaranteed after signing Huff, I don't see how it works economically now. No one's going to convince me. And I'm sure we're going to get a lot of people. Oh, no, you can do it. No, no. Brett, no one's going to convince with me. Reddick, you mean? What, yeah, no, with Reddick, you mean? Yeah. It can't work with yeah. now. Potential. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're bringing that, back Josh thinking, Sweat but... and you're starting Huff. So you can't, it's not yeah, going to work. So that to me and the roster bonus being moved, as you said last, last pod, that is the clearest indication that he's going to get moved. It, to, it, to me, it's a no, it's a no doubt. He's going to eventually get moved. If he's not, I'm fascinated to see how it plays out because economically well, it wouldn't make sense. That I'm with you on that. But, but now I'm going to go back to something I asked, I've asked you this twice. Is how he going for it? Is he trying to win a Super Bowl this year? Yeah. Then why not? Why not keep Reddick and just make it work? It's just that you, I hate you know to business say, I, always I, factors in. You know that that does. I know, not. but but I'm saying I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just I I get it. I that's why I asked you. I know it's it's irregular. This doesn't make sense to be paying one guy ten million. Uh, Hassan will make a minimum of fifteen point five million this season. He's got upside of seventeen million as is right now. And then now I don't, we don't have Huff's contract, his breakdown, the cap number. I, I know what it is, but that's not what I want. I want to know what the ca cash is, everything. I want to what he's getting paid in cash this season yeah. with the signing bonus and, and everything that he's owed. Cause that'll tell you everything you need to know. That would go on your point. You're paying three guys and play. And here's another thing with Hassan. If, if by a minor miracle, he's back, I should say minor miracle, but again, they have the chances are they're going to move him. But if they don't and he's back, how are you going to make the rotation work? Because Asan's going to want to get paid the next season. He's going to want to have to. He's going to want to play most of the snaps again. So how yeah. do you make this? You just can't. It, it, it's very difficult. But again, if you're trying to win a Super Bowl, you, you'd be better off with having Reddick on the roster. Except with this asterisk. Move this along. Twenty-two. We'll talk more about this starting next week. We're, we're going. To, we're going all draft next week. Mm -hmm. At twenty-two, and we'll we'll get an edge rusher list for y'all and figure that out. Who might be there? Because who's to say that? Look, who's to say that there's not a guy that 
they wouldn't want there a 22 who could come in and play right away. Who knows? Right. So. Right. So also to answer your question in a roundabout way uh, is if you, let's say you get a third round pick for Hassan, we'll meet you in the middle. I think we okay. think they should get a right. second. There's a chance. Maybe there's a four. Let's say they get a third round pick that gives okay. them multiple picks. All right. You got a first two twos, two threes in this scenario. Right. Uh, assuming that they don't lose a pick. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, gives you a lot of ammunition to pull off a trade. If you want to pull off a trade, not just up in the draft, but like if you want to trade multiple picks to get a player in the league. Okay. Um, we, one guy we've, we've said, Hey, if they want to, if Patrick Sertain was to be available, right. And you wanted to trade for him and that helps you get some ammunition to trade for him. Then you could say, you just made your team better. You know, you got good edge rushing yeah, and, and now you have a, uh, now you have an all pro corner. So that, yeah, that he's not, good. but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not, not now. <laughs> yeah. Denver loves him, but uh, the bottom line is uh, they have to do something that right now, and we'll, we'll, we'll break this down in, in a few minutes, but this corner situation is like, wow, all of a sudden they got real old there. And it's uh, that to me, because that's why I asked you if how he's going for it. And I, I get it. We're, we're still in March here. I always have to tell myself that so I don't get yelled at by NFL people when I go, hey, why aren't you guys doing something with this? Whatever team I speak with. Mm -hmm. I go, why are you why are you like worrying about us right now? We're, we're in March. I'm like, all right. I'm just asking. You know, guys, like you, I'm sipping my ties right now. Come on, man. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I'll be at the owners meetings next week. I look forward to asking those dumb questions. But um, I, I, I've had to learn the hard way, as you and I've talked about this. We, we've had to learn like how he always has a plan. It, it it manifests into something either during the draft or after. And we mentioned Blunt. We mentioned Darby. Like he, he knows he sees like last year. It was weak. He just missed on on all those bargain basement guys. You, you can't do that. Patchworking doesn't work when you're not when you have so many holes and you patchwork it. It you're asking for trouble. Yeah. But this year, it, now the, you could say off the ball line practice patchwork, but there's some interesting players here. Well, let me ask you this question: Would you agree at least this the, this makeshift group that three of them are one year deals? The, at least on paper, there it's a better group, is it not? Potentially yeah, uh, than last year, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. A hundred percent. I mean, That's my you know, opinion. and not to disparage what Nick Moore, once N'Kobe Dean went down and again, not like N'Kobe was lighting it up, but at least he was yeah. out there, a young building block, getting experience playing. But once he went down and you're basically on Nick Morrow and Zach Cunningham and then Zach gets hurt and you got what Shaq Leonard and Ben Van Schumer in there. I mean, this, this group, I like Oren Burks as depth. I like Ben Van Schumer in year two, Andrew DeCecco uh, caught up with him and wrote a really nice story on inside the birds.com about, been working really hard this off season to get better uh, at these things, you know, so Burks Bond, we'll see if he makes the team. I, I yeah, I definitely think well, Devin White's not a, listen, he struggled, no doubt about it. We'll see what happens, but the guy's played for five or six years in the league. You know? So, I mean, he's, he gives you some presence. Yeah. yeah I, I like it. On Burks. And yeah. you, you're with Greg, Greg, Greg Cosell loves Burks. I, mean, yeah. I was like, Whoa. And as you brought up, which is a really good point. Burks is longer. He had Cunningham, uh, how he signed uh, Cunningham last year was longer. Miles Jack was in small. Devin mm -hmm. White is at 5'11". You know, he's 6'1", 235-ish, maybe probably a little heavier. Bond is, if he plays inside, which he probably will get some snaps inside if he's on the team, uh, he's not a small guy. So, yeah, you, I think you're onto something. Oh, by the way, your guy Brandon Smith from Penn State, he's 6'3 plus. Nah, he yeah. probably won't make the team, but he's yeah. long. I, I know he's a project. <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> I swear these these Penn State guys over the last five they come out all twitched up for that. Like when I was at Penn State, it was like you got the scrappy, work hard, you know, overcome the odds type player. And now they're all just like running four two forties, four three forties. It's crazy. So uh, it's James Franklin's done a really good job recruiting at that program and getting Ooh, a higher caliber. As back. you transition. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, it, which is a good transition. Franklin. Good, nice yes. work. Nice he work. giveth and he taketh away sometimes, uh, James Franklin, not just in wins See. and losses, but also uh, yeah. in relationships, perhaps. So let, let's talk about this. So the Eagles are under an investigation uh, into alleged tampering violation uh, because of impermissible, alleged impermissible contact between Howie Roseman and Saquon Barkley. And the only reason the NFL knows about this or anyone knows about this is because James Franklin uh, is in a press conference and says something along the lines of, Oh yeah. Saquon told me that how he said, uh, I forget what the exact quote is. I do have it up, but he basically insinuated uh, his quote insinuated that Howie 
talk to him. He said that one of the first things that Howie said to him on the phone as part of his sales pitch to him was not only the Philadelphia Eagles and that, but the connection with Penn State and the fan base as well. So that put the whole tampering on the radar. And Adam, since yeah. that's happened, uh, Saquon Barkley has said that's not how it went down. It was misinterpreted. And then James Franklin himself, I think uh, a day or two ago, also said, oops, my bad. That's really not what I what happened. He said he had a 10-minute conversation with Saquon and just assumed and connected dots that weren't there. Nice hmm. words doesn't stop the NFL yeah. from investigating. No, what, what, what I mean, I I think we, you and I have both the same information. The NFL is definitely looking in with yes. it. See, I, I think talking to other teams about this situation. Look, it, we know we're not accusing Roseman of anything here. We, you know, we and just laying and out the they, facts. They've denied, you know. Yeah, they, they they put a they they put out word, you know, w w right when this situation happened that. They talked to the agent. They didn't talk to Saquon. Um, the only time you could talk to Saquon is that uh, it was the first day of free agency opening, the doors opening on what the Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Then you could talk to him one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but you can't talk to him before that. You can't relay a message to the agent to tell him. You can't, by the way, you can't do that either. Just, you know, b based on what you just said, if, if, if that had been alleged, you still can't even do that. Now, mm -hmm. uh, all we all we've heard is the NFL's looking into it. Uh, now, in terms of an investigation, if they actually are doing that, um, I know there's some things that N the NFL does uh, with clubs when they've had to look into this. Over the you know, it's going back. This is my 25th year, I think, covering the NFL. 24, 25 years. I I know when. Not this one's a little different <laughs> based on what James <laughs> Franklin said, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that when they think there's enough information, they could go to a building and. Request from records and laptops and phones and all sorts of stuff. Uh, what else do you know? What else have you heard? Like how, how these things are done? Yeah, I actually heard the same thing that sometimes these investigations take a long time because, um, and this, you know, I spoke to someone who knows about NFL investigations uh, because of what you said. Sometimes it involves search and seizure of property that could be like cell phones, laptops, electronics, something, you know, anything that you might use as a communication device. Um, and the NFL has the right to do that. And they do that, do that. In fact, uh, that was involved in, I can't remember which case it was. I don't know if it was the most recent time the NFL, I think got involved. Um, the person was telling me about was the Atlanta injury report situation with B. John Robinson. Oh. And if you remember, see, that sounds like something that shouldn't take a whole long time, but it took quite a bit. Now, in the end, all that they got was, I think, a $75,000 fine for the team and $25,000 for um, Arthur Smith himself. So, but the forensic, so what I know is that the NFL has a, they outsource their forensics department in these situations to a different company. Oh, so the, that company has to come in, do the seat, you know, they get the laptops or the phones or whatever it is they need, bookkeeping, whatever. They comb through it. They try to find any evidence that would either give them a pro or a con of the mission or the objective. Um, it was told to me that obviously James Franklin will be a big part of the, the investigation. They'll talk to him. But you have to expect that what Franklin said publicly is the same thing he's going to tell the NFL, which is I misinterpreted it. I thought it was Saquon. It was all through Saquon's agent. So it's going to be – unless they find a direct – some direct evidence of tampering, it might be difficult for them to really come down or even come down hard, if at all, on the Eagles. It, it all depends on what they find. I, I can't believe how he would use his own foot. If he did, so I'm not saying he did, but if he did, how the hell? You can't put myself in his shoes. I would not use my own phone. <laughs> yeah. Because that would be obvious. Because that if I'm the if I'm the league, I mean, that's forensic. I'm, I'm looking at his phone records. I'm looking at his phone and 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 I'm talking. I want to get. To, by the way, I would, I would call Saquon. So anyway, to move this mm -hmm. along. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if anything comes of this. But, um, but we we, we know. I, I do know, and you have the same information. They're definitely, they're definitely looking into it. It is, yes. and I know ESPN had something out. Uh, Dan Graziano said the NFL was looking into it. My, my buddy from ESPN. So, um, I, I will tell you though one thing. But I work with Alex Marvez at uh, at Fox, FoxSports.com. He and I worked on a story. It went up. They still got docked. What happened was uh, Gunther Cunningham, who was the 
former Chiefs head coach at one point and assistant coach. He then, I believe, was the Lions defensive coordinator. And I believe it was probably 2010 or 2011. Anyway, he was asked about Derek Johnson for some reason, who was the Chiefs linebacker. And he's he's like, the quote was, I'm paraphrasing because this is 14 years ago. So I'm like, man, I'd like to have a guy like that, which he shouldn't have said. Mm-hmm. He just he should have said, guy's a really good football player. Right. That's it. And the Chiefs were pissed. And they got docked. The the uh, the Chiefs raised. They were pissed, and they called the league about it. League went up getting the quotes. <laughs> it was easy to get. Did you know? I don't. I don't remember how long it took, but the Chiefs. Uh, the Lions got docked a late round pick. So this is different. This is this is different. Obviously, yes, they have quotes because it's public record. See, when it's public record like that, you you got to look into it. You 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 can't. You got to make sure that there was nothing done that's not right. Because mm-hmm. not only the Giants, I, and we know the Giants didn't want, we're not going to offer them, but how about the Texans? Right. I mean, they wanted Saquon. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. So, the, so you raise a good point, though. And I brought this up with the, uh, the NFL source I was speaking to. And then there's really not okay. clarity on it. If you remember the tampering violation last year, not too far from this time, against the Cardinals for the Jonathan Gannon contact that they had, the impermissible contact with Jonathan Gannon. Oh, yeah. They worked it out between the Cardinals and the Eagles that they wound up flipping picks, I want to say, in the third round. So that was sort of uh, I don't know, that that to me is like a little slap on the wrist, right? Like you you flip picks with the car with a team in the third round. Okay. Um, so so this is I tried to figure out if that's kind of like oh cause, template. Because they right? worked it right. Cause remember the Cardinals and Eagles worked that out amongst themselves, which is really yes. fascinating. <laughs> yeah. But uh, when I asked about listen. that as a template. Because that's right. sort of a unique situation uh, we haven't seen that before. Yeah. I, I kind of got the nah, I don't know if that's that's going to be like like you'll see if if the Eagles were to be found guilty if there would be some kind of Eagles Giants swap. I did I didn't I kind of got a nah, not sure on that. So that was a very yeah. unique situation. But, All right. but well, I well, want to add real quick though that yeah. these things can be time consuming because they announced that measure. Right before the draft, the whole Eagles. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Eagles Cardinals. They um, buried it. And they, they took, yeah, it, it like, buried yeah. and it took a lot of people, even within the NFL, by like surprise. Oh, oh, what, what? This is a, so, so you never know when this thing's going to actually get levied and, and, and announced. Well, well, if I mean, levied. I mean, I'm no, sorry, if, I should say if it happens. Yeah. Be clear. Yeah. Be clear. <laughs> yeah. There may not be anything. They may, you know, they've did, Eagles have denied it. We'll see. Right. No, folks, the reason why we didn't talk about it earlier, I know people were asking me on Twitter. It's because we didn't have enough information. We, we we try not to overreact to stuff that's out there until we get the information. Right. I wanted to look into it. I know you did. That was a really interesting point. Uh, it, really good background that forensically that the and I didn't even know that the NFL will bring in their own people. So they that that's smart because they may not be experts in it. You know. Yes. Um, yes. So we'll see. We'll see if anything comes along. You know. Again, it could be nothing. It could be something. Uh, so we'll see what happens. If anything. all right. So we will see what happens. And and the only thing that really be, like. To, to put a bow on this, the Eagles have done a nice job amassing draft picks here. <laughs> so if there were some situation where they lost a draft pick, that would kind of suck for them. I mean, if it's a sixth round pick or a fifth round pick, you live. But anything higher than that, it's like, you know, that, that kind of sucks. But like you said, Howie's usually a pretty responsible person when it comes. And, and by the way, he's got a great compliance guy in the front office. He's the AGM named John Ferrari. Um, who is most going. people don't know who he is. This guy is a mastermind. He worked, I believe, for the NFL at one point. He's specializes yeah. in compliance. So if, yeah. if the Eagles, if, I gotta say, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little stab here. If the Eagles are found guilty and it's egregious, they're idiots. I mean, like you have all that the that's my point. In <laughs> How he's been in the league since not what 2099, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's been been a GM since what 2010. He's had control. Uh, since Andy left, except for the 2015, he, he had a lot of control when Chip was here. Chip had some, but Howie had a lot, and obviously he had full control since he came back in 2016. He knows better. Come on, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I've nobody knows. I mean, honestly, they've denied it. I would hope that he didn't. And look, they got him. Let's let's we'll see what happens. If if anything, but Saquon is here, and we have still got plenty of time left in free agency, folks. All right, a couple of value free agent signings to get to. And when you're talking about value, Adam, whether your resolution is to save money, 
eat better or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. So say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll love delivered right to your door. So you resolve to actually sit down and eat dinner around the table. Well, what do you do about those nights when your schedule is jam-packed? That's when you turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals. That includes their 15-minute recipes. They're designed to help you minimize mealtime stress. Who could argue with that? Every time we eat from HelloFresh, whether it's quick and easy or any of their other meals, we're blown away by the freshness, the taste, and the overall quality. Tried so many good options, and we keep trying them. There's seafood, there's steak, there's chicken, there's vegetarian meals. Whatever you got, whatever you want, they've got, and you're going to love it. And here's their new great deal. If you go to HelloFresh.com slash Eagles Free, use the promo code Eagles Free, and you get free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while you have an active subscription. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Eagles Free using the promo code Eagles free. It's all one word. E-A-G-L-E-S-F-R-E-E. Act now for America's number one meal kit. All right. Well, you know, one segue to another from James Franklin to Saquon Barkley tampering to yet another Penn State angle. Adam, the Eagles sign a defensive tackle who played at Penn State. He is a guy that I I really enjoyed watching um, because he's not the biggest guy in the world, Adam, but his get off at Penn State off that line was whoo. I mean, he he can really get in uh, for an interior tackle. His name is hmm. PJ Mustafer. Uh, he got hurt one year, and it really sucked because it it, it left them uh, thin. But really good player who wound up being a he went undrafted probably because he's undersized. Uh, played for the well, he was originally signed by the Broncos after the draft, and then spent some time with I think on the practice squad. Then got signed by the New Orleans Saints uh, later in in December. Correct. Right. And he just got signed. Yeah. You, you've you talked about this a lot, really, the last two years. They've been looking for this backup nose mm-hmm. for Jordan Davis. And Marlon Tui Peloto is sort of a tweener, so to speak. I mean, he's got size. Whether he's a natural nose or not is up to debate. And then you got Noah Ellis has been on off the roster since 22. So, yeah, you just you throw him in there. They're very young at D-tackle, which is a good thing. But they certainly could use another veteran. But Mustafer will... Have a chance to kind of work his way through through OTAs, and if everything goes well, there's a there's a process with with guys you sign off the street. They go through OTAs. If they look good, they go to training camp. If they don't, they're released. It's simple as that. It, mm-hmm. And he's going to have a chance to make it. Uh, no question about it. Moro Jomo's there. Tui Peloto, as we mentioned, Thomas Booker, who was uh, let's not forget about him. I know he's not a nose, but he's a he's a D tackle, who was a fifth rounder uh, in 2022 from Stanford. Again, they, they really could use a, a veteran there, and we'll get into that in a couple minutes here. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to see what this kid could do. Yeah, um, you know, 318 is good size. I don't know if he's added weight. He was 318 when he entered the NFL. Um, that's yeah. good size, like, if you're a college nose. I mean, I still think the Eagles need, like, a 330. You know, they have Noah Ellis on the on the, on the the uh, squad. Because th- you can be a three technique and a 4'3", three, a 318. That's not – like huge you're, yeah. you're, you're usually yeah. between 305 310 315 there but so 318 sort of makes you a tweener uh just sort of a little bit like marlon tui Peloto in that regard so uh, but he did did play that position like that at penn state so he knows the technique uh he understands it and yeah he will he will compete there but i i think he gives you know, even a little bit more upfield burst so he's like that tweener that you mentioned yeah. someone who can play nose but also yeah. play a three technique and give you a little bit burst there he actually he played, I believe, in three or four games for the Saints. Mm-hmm. So he's he's you know he's been on the field before, and like you said, I mean it's a, it's an opportunity to to show what you can do. Yeah, he he was uh, yeah. In fact, that's what happened. He was signed from Denver's practice squad. So yep. um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if he could he could push for a spot. And they, they really they need to figure out this nose tackle thing behind Jordan Davis. That's an opportunity. It's bottom line. You know, there, there's 100%. an opportunity there for him. Hundred percent. Uh, and you know the Eagles will bring in no less than no fewer than thirty-five defensive tackles uh, at camp, and you know we'll see if they keep seven, seven again. <laughs> seven. People, I just remember like you know one guy from another team goes, "What is Howie doing keeping seven? I said, "I don't know." <laughs> they're all good, and then he went up trading Contavious Street, but 
You know, the, the Eagles, and, and one of the reasons why they are generally very good is they don't look at their roster building the same way that other clubs do. Why are they usually very competitive every year? Strong on the lines. You would think something so simple that Joe Banner and Jeffrey Lurie brought in in 1994, everyone would do that because it, it's, I, I know Joe Douglas believed in that. I remember talking to Joe about that many years ago because mm-hmm. he had that, they had that philosophy uh, in yep. Baltimore, although yep. they, they build the opposite. They build a, a, a linebacker and <laughs> Eagles don't like Baltimore does, but they, they believe strongly in the lines there. I just don't know something that you would think every team would want. Why every team doesn't do that. Like Atlanta, you look, look at Atlanta. One of the reasons why they struggle mismatched offensive linemen, Where's the pass rush on defense? Well, there's why you struggle. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I'm with you on that. All right. Um, speaking of the back end, though, uh, Eagles brought in a cornerback, another guy who was not drafted. Uh, he was, what, signed by the Falcons after the draft, named Tyler Hall? Yeah, 2020 draft, he was signed. Uh, I, I Really cool thing that happened with him. So the Raiders were running out of corners a couple years ago. Uh, so, you know, Nate Hobbs is really an excellent nickel and slot corner and very physical. He, they moved him outside a couple years ago because they just didn't have any corners left. So Hall, uh, was with them, Tyler Hall, who you're talking about. They, they put, he, he got thrown in, he's got thrown in the lineup. He he was playing pretty significant snaps and he did, he was very competitive, a feisty, he's, he's a slot. He really is a slot and, and they moved Hobbs outside and he wasn't supposed to play, but they, they didn't have any players and. You know, the, the cool thing about signing undrafted free agents, they always have a chip on their shoulder. I've talked to players, I know you, I know you have as a beat reporter. They, they, they're they always, not saying they're pissed off, but they're like, you know, they feel like they're slighted. And look, I get it. There's a reason why they're not drafted, but the, the kid put some respectable tape out there. I know he's now on his fourth team. He's also mm-hmm. with the Rams and now with the Eagles and he's a, he's a slot and the Eagles have an open for a slot. So we'll see. He's another guy. He's, he's on the roster for now. We'll see if he could, could work his way through OTAs and get to training camp. That that's you know, folks, that's the way it works. Nobody gets an automatic invite to training camp. You've got to get through OTAs first and workouts and so forth. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like not like a non-roster invitee for uh, spring training. <laughs> right, you right. You got to try out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some. Oh, he'll be in training. Really? How do you know? <laughs> I mean, he's got to he's got to perform. But it, man, this is a this is a this is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, no question about it for him. They don't Eagles don't have a nickel right now. Uh, we'll see about Isaiah Rogers when, if and when he gets reinstated. Uh, if he does, he definitely will be competing for that nickel spot. Plus, as a kickoff returner, because mm-hmm. uh, he's really fast. Uh, but again, he's not on the roster yet, and they've got to kind of figure out what the nickel situation is. And by the way, I, I put this in our chat on um, Wednesday night. Like they're they're twelve like decent nickels still out there. Oh my gosh, they are. Yeah, but like we said. All of them, almost all of them, one way or another, have been banged up here, banged up there. Um, so I, I, really, I really would like to see the Eagles bring Avante Maddox back on a one-year, you know. Whatever. Yeah, sure. I mean, sure. he knows the system. He plays well when healthy. I get it. Like, if they're done because of the injuries, I get it. But, again, when you're when you're comparing him to other guys who also have injuries, then you might as well go with the one you know. You know, that, that would be my, my uh- take. Yeah, honestly, he, you can make the argument. I'm looking at my chart here. I'm going to look at Bradley Robley. He's much older. Uh, Levi Wallace can play inside and outside. He's a competitive nickel who, play, who, who played outside last year, and then they benched him for, for Jerry Porter Jr. in Pittsburgh. This one I still cannot believe. Kendall Vildor, who wound up actually starting on the outside. He's really better inside, who didn't, who the Eagles cut off the practice squad. He's out yeah. there. Jerry Jacobs, a former nickel for Detroit. Darnay Holmes, we've talked about him. Shannon Sullivan, a former Eagle. Do, do we meet Shannon at at? Uh, we met one of those guys, those back end guys, some years ago at, at a charity event. Might have been Sullivan. I, f- I forget. I can't uh, remember. Trey Hernan, who's long term nickel for Jacksonville, still out there. Uh, Rashad Fenton, who's a who's, who could play nickel. Uh, K oh, Kwan Williams is one of the best nickels in the NFL for a couple years with Cleveland. He's been around with the Niners in Denver. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's out there. So yeah, again, it's, but it, it, we're by the way, we're in a buyer's market now. So this is where Howie excels at understanding and having relationships with agents, agents by and large, like Howie, they're, because they're, they're, they know what he's like. He's got great energy mm-hmm. when he wants a player, they know it. He doesn't, he, he, he gets right into it. He doesn't play games when he wants a player that is by the way. So it, it is a buyer's market right now. You don't have to do anything right now. The numbers are going to continue to go down and down and down. Yes. All right, so moving on, um, we've talked about some of their immediate needs that they still have to fill. Running back, 
probably should have one more by camp. Uh, still need a, a four and a five receiver. One of them who should, who needs specialty in the slot. I mean, they still don't have a slot wide receiver right now. This one surprised me a little bit because I don't know that I would call it a buyer's market at receiver. Cause you really don't want to start getting into bed with some 33, 34 year old, you know, injured off injured receiver. Who's going to have to play 60% of the snaps for you because he's your slot receiver. All right. Here are your slots that are out there. Zacchaeus, of course, Lamade Zacchaeus. I'd bring him back. Uh, Randall Cobb, forget it. That plays just in what you see. He, he's yeah. got to be done. I mean, he he looks done. Paris Campbell was he 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 got benched. Uh, Dayball as I understand it benched him last season, so he's out there. He's not a bad player. Yeah, he's not what I'm uh, talking about as far as age, but as far as like the mileage and the injuries, I'm I'm you know again you're they need a guy like Paris Campbell. I would sign as a fifth receiver to maybe compete for backup, uh, but they need a a sixty percent of the offense receiver. They need a slot guy. <laughs> well, he could. I mean, he's had. I know he's been hurt a lot. I mean, they, they, well, by the way, they signed him to do that. He just didn't perform. Well, here, right. here. Okay, here's the slot list. We'll get through it. Stone Shepard, ninety injuries. Poor guy. He's had so many injuries. ACL, uh, yeah. uh, Achilles, um, Buzz Watkins. But you, we know he's really not good at, at playing inside. Scotty Miller can do it. He could play inside or outside. But he's he's he. Like you said, if you want a guy to get sixty percent play time, I don't know if you want him on the field that much. Yeah, it's oof, boy. I'm a little surprised. I'm I'm a little surprised that there's not been a. I know again, the the the, the season's not over. The offseason's not over. Plenty of opportunities. Yep. You could draft the kid, but you can. It's hard to rely on a draft pick. But I'm just a little mm-hmm. surprised, given what we know about Kellen Moore and his offense, that there wouldn't be a more sure. concrete third guy to. Well, there. The, but I just, again, the list isn't good. Now, now, I, Allen Robinson. When I talked to him, he got cut by the Steelers. The question with Allen Robinson is, what does he have left? All of yeah. a sudden, the Steelers didn't want him back, and they're barren at wide receiver. You know, they, they trade Deontay Johnson, they cut Allen Robinson. Robinson told me he definitely wants to play. He told me <laughs> that it came down this the uh, Eagles and Rams two years ago. He said it, he was he was. I asked him a series of questions. He didn't deny any of it. He goes, "Yeah, it was it was down to the wire." And he didn't quite realize how good the Eagles were going to be because he he goes the Rams had just won a Super Bowl, which is true, right? right. Hey, you know. So, but the, you, you, now Tyler Boyd is a high end high end slot. That that's big money, like that. I I can't see that because he's going to want to get paid. And how much would he get the ball with Goddard and two stud receivers? See, that's the other thing here. Mm-hmm. If if you come here, yeah, you might have a chance to go deep in the playoffs, but are you going to get the rock? That's, a right, that's fair. That's a fair point. Um. I wonder if, you know, to me, Zacchaeus is a good guy to bring back. They may want to bring in someone a little bigger who's a little better in run blocking because you run out of 11 personnel a decent amount. So, um, well, I I guess we'll just have to see. But I think we're making the point that this is an important position that they still have uh, remaining to be to be filled. Yeah. And then that's probably it for offense on defense. We just mentioned defensive tackle, probably another veteran in there by camp. Uh, and corner and safety is a position that they continue to look at. So uh, at some point, you you wonder if some move will be made uh, there. I, I would say by training camp, would you not agree they have to add two outside corners by trade, by draft, by signing? Two outside corners. Uh, well, they don't. Yeah, because they're number one backup outside corner right now. If I mean, and that's assuming James Ricks. Highbury is starting, is Ricks yeah. or Job? Um, Can't be Job. Cannot be. Ricks, but again, yeah. see, here's the thing. This is, I mean, every personal guy says the same thing to me. It's kind of funny. Is there someone who, if our starter, no matter what position is, could he get us out of a bad spot for three or four games? Let me ask you this question. Do you want Ricks? I know he's a good story, but would you think Ricks could handle himself as a starter for three to four games? Mm. Maybe. Mm. That's your that's your answer. Yeah. That's why that's why you have to. Have well, I just corner. I don't want to discount like improvement and everything. Like so, he right. could be. But right, if you're asking me right this second, I would yes. Say, hey. you know. yeah. Well, the draft is coming up. The yeah. draft is coming up. I know how he has not done this before. His we know his history. It's in the first round when he's had the, the call. It's been edge rushers and offensive linemen mostly. It's not. He hasn't done the corner. You know, Lito was not his call. Lito was not his call. Right. So, uh, yeah, you have to look at that. And in the safety, they obviously need at least one guy. Yeah. Now, the, the question would be with Gardner Johnson, how much inside is he going to play? Because he, he was a jack of all trades two years ago. He was phenomenal. 
We know he could play inside if need be, but he's a safety by trade. So, but again, they have to add at least one safety by training camp. I would agree. All right. Um, so, you know, one thing we didn't do, we've talked a lot about who the Eagles have signed in free agency. We haven't really yeah. maybe talked about the impact of some of their losses. So we're going to do that for a second. First, we're going to pause to hear a word from our friends at Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people over the country want to see. Owner Brett Shoulder, make sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. And if you head into Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You'll get a great deal. All right. So, you know, offensive line is an area, Adam, where the Eagles have suffered a lot of losses, maybe not huge names. Sam Alu was a big loss last year, but yeah, numbers numerically. I mean, you lost Sam Alu, lost Nate Herbig at one point, lost Coyote Awosaka. At one point, lost Jack Anderson, you know, uh, at one point, lost Tyree Phillips, who you really kind of gained, but then you lost anyway. Uh, By and the way, here, go ahead. Awoshika started in the playoffs. <laughs> yes. It's amazing that Awoshika and Kendall Vildor were playing like prominent roles for them. <laughs> one of the all time favorite names of mine. I, I used to call him the horror movie actor. What in a Kendall Vildor. Kendall Vildor. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I, I know he played. Um, you know, for the Bears, and I, I wondered, was he? He probably wasn't with Vic. Yeah, I'm sure he. I think maybe Vic might have missed him there, but mm -hmm. nevertheless, uh, yeah. I mean, what, what, so so they lost Mariota, and, right? And I, I what we had heard was he was. It, it was like if they struck out on every quarterback they were on, they seemed to be on like eight to, or eight to ten quarterbacks this offseason. They might have looked at Mariota if he's still around, but it didn't matter. He signed one year, six million. Mm -hmm. And it, we know they, they they had interest in bringing Swift back, but they weren't going to pay him. And Chicago did. Uh, the, the Kind of the underrated loss it would be Jack Stahl, who signed with the, the Giants. Don't you think so? I definitely it's, agree. I definitely, sense. definitely agree. You know, I mean, this is a guy you could rely on to go out there and and block when you need a uh, that, that yeah. tight end to go in there and block when you don't have Goddard. And um, if you look at, Guys like Grant Calcaterra or Albert O, or uh, I'm trying to think who else they brought in. Uh, they get a very athletic kid. What's his name? Jacob. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, EJ Jenkins. E. J. No, Jenkins. no, no. The real, the athletic kid who was with the Rams. Who I, who oh, I. Oh, Jacob Harris is probably yeah, going to be receiver. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah receiver right, right. They just so. don't have. They don't yeah. have that yeah. kind of wide tight end. Um, that well, they do because Tungi, I Tung guy's back for the fiftieth time. Yeah, I meant proven, you know, who's going to go. Yeah, I mean, oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, I get I got it. I got it. But losing losing Stoll, uh, who got, uh, he got a couple hundred grand fully guaranteed on his one-year deal. Yeah, we'll see. Look, it's a huge loss, but it's a loss. And I, I to me, and I mentioned this before, it, would it surprise you in the second or third round that they drafted a tight end? No, I think this is about the age uh, that Goddard's at when – Ertz was the same age as when they drafted Dallas Goddard. So uh, if you remember that season, they lost Trey Burton in free agency and Brent Selleck retired. So they were pretty thin oh, wow. at the position. They, you know, this was right after they won the Super Bowl. They had Zach Ertz, but they didn't have a whole lot, you know, then they wound up going with the whole Rod Rogers thing for a little while there. Like, right? you know, oh. they, uh, <laughs> as a, as a number Richard three. Rogers. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. The only thing is like, you know, you know, they got to rebuild the cornerback position. You know, they got to rebuild linebacker. You know, they got to, they're going to spend some draft capital pretty early, probably on offensive line. So I, where are they getting this tight end? Like fourth round, fifth round? I guess you could do that. That's fine. You know, well, especially with if Goddard like turning guy. 30, yeah, with Goddard turning 30, I believe in January, look, they did it with, with Ertz and Goddard. I mean, Yep. Uh, they drafted Goddard to be his replacement in 2018. Uh, you hate to, you don't want to push anyone out of the door. Goddard's very talented, but it, you want to do it early. You know, you 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 keep Goddard maybe a couple more years to finish out his contract. But uh, would not surprise me at all if they drafted a guy as high as the third round. Uh, they so they lost Stall. He he got uh, three hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Fully guaranteed at signing of his $1.1 million deal. So, boy, they really liked him. 
uh, after the Eagles didn't tender him as a restricted free agent. Right. Oh, this one just happened earlier this week. What we had heard was Jack Driscoll had interest in coming back to the Eagles, but he'd rather go somewhere where he could compete for more playing time. Well, he signs with the Dolphins. He certainly can't be competing for the right tackle job. That's Austin Jackson's. He, he signed an extension. Mm -hmm. uh, now, could there be Isaiah Wynn's back? Uh, Robert Jones is back. Could he Could he look to push? Maybe. You know, neither of those guys right now could, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know that either one is the future. So maybe maybe it's a better chance there. But at, on your point, they just – I'm looking at the depth of their offensive line right now. I mean, uh, Raven Clark, we've mentioned, he's okay. I know he can play guard. Brett Toth, is, he's been hurt a lot. He's never shown anything yet. They like him. He keeps going back. Fred Johnson's definitely their backup left. They like him a lot. Matt Hennessy mm -hmm. uh, was that guy we talked about a week ago that would, would be their – probable backup center guard but do you think see that I, I i would it surprise you if they signed one more veteran no it wouldn't surprise me you know daring don't forget about the kid from kansas city canard uh wait oh canard, yeah. yeah 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 canard but yeah. again it's not like a proven yeah. player so yeah no no it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me at all they've got fred johnson they got la raven clark but they're always looking for for guys um who are out there wouldn't surprise me if after cut down day if a, a guard tackle became available they went and Okay. Grab yeah. Because that's yeah, what they, they like to do. do anything now, but yeah. No. yeah, again, you don't have to do anything now, but we're, we're looking again, free agency is always about current needs. Mm -hmm. Draft is about future needs with, Hey, if you get something out of year one, great. You know, you know, it's, it's 25% of a guy's career who's drafted. Right. Uh, so, and then uh, Sua Peta. Yeah. Again, like you said, they lost another guy, Sua Peta to the bucks. But now the, his thing was he could, he can't play. He's not a center. He could play. He learned how to play both guard spots. Mm -hmm. So I have a chance to compete for a job there defensively. Now they, they did this thing. They, they cut Maddox. We mentioned, and they cut Byard Byard side within a week with the, with the bears for pretty good money, by the way. So they obviously Ryan Paul's their general manager was like, Hey, we, we need a veteran back there at safety. Uh, so he was able to do that. Uh, but yeah, like you said, they did, they did lose a bunch of players. Most of them, uh, they kind of let walk or didn't make much of an effort to to bring back, but it does leave some depth issues at certain positions. All right, so we said the Eagles need a running back, or they're likely to just bring in one more guy before camp. The longer that Boston yeah. Scott is out on there, what are the odds that that one guy is Boston Scott? I, I feel like Boston I, needs I a would, new environment, but I just wonder. Yeah, I had heard that too, and we thought so last year and he came back. Uh, being, you know, we, we've heard a little bit stronger mm -hmm. that because there are the, the funny thing is I studied rosters the last week. There there are plenty of jobs open for number three running backs. And there, there's some teams where we need competition for number two, which which honestly right now is probably his best bet because Barkley's a starter. He's going to play almost all the snaps. Gainwell's the two. They have to figure out number three. Boston's better than that. And he showed that he has value as a kickoff returner. I, I don't understand last year the usage. To, he's, he was their highest paid running back at $2 million, was making more than Swift. And they, they just wouldn't use him. And plus, with the with the tush push, he wasn't getting the goal line carries against the Giants anymore. Right. So, right. Right. anyway. Yeah, no, I, I think it would probably benefit him to find somewhere else. Because he, he's yeah. productive when he's in the game. So, uh, it, it's kind of too bad that nobody's already <laughs> kind of recognized that and tried to give him at least a shot. But he's still out That's there. a great... Great job of scouting over the years for the. the I mean, did, did, did they sign him off the? Did they sign him off the Saints practice squad? Is that how they got him? Yeah, they signed him off. The, good job by the pro personnel department on that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's it's like man, who is it? Because the name, like people were people call him Scott Boston, like, like <laughs> this guy. Right. But anyway, yeah. So so Boston Scott's out there. Rashad Penny, obviously, he cannot come back after what happened. The coaches wouldn't play him, so can't see that happening. You mentioned Zacchaeus earlier. Watkins, we mentioned Julio Jones. Julio Jones is out there. Yes. Uh, did he? Ha did you think he had any mileage left on the tires? Not much, but it's funny you just glossed right over the guy I was thinking. D does does the longer Quez Watkins stay out there, and oh. the love that Nick Sirianni has for Quez Watkins, and the need for a number three receiver, even if he doesn't fit slot well, like you just said, there's not too many out there that do. Does that make Nick Sirianni and uh, Kellen Moore put their heads together and say? You know, we can get him at a real easy price here. I mean, he's still out there, well, better and minimum. And it, it's Howie's decision, number one. Number two, let, let's put it this way where Gainwell, and I say this jokingly, is like Sirianni's 
you know, Sirianni's son is almost like Gamble. He loves the guy. You know, he just loves the guy. He's loved him. You know, we talked about this when he was drafted. I mean, they they really that staff wanted him back then in twenty one. They mm-hmm. got him, and he's had a significant role. But we've talked about it. He needs. They need someone with a little bit more juice behind Barkley. That receiver, Quez is not a three. He's a four at best. I think Nick was just being nice when he would talk about Quez. after a while. I think once he saw reality, remember Quez got benched for a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's a four who could run. That, that's what he is. You, you're right. They need a slot who could be their three. They 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 got to find that guy. Uh, Quez was just miscast badly. That was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Well, Zacchaeus, I'll say this again. He looked fine. There was nothing wrong with him. They just Brian Johnson and Sirianni did not do a good job of getting him the football. We we Nick's excuse was well the top three guys have to get the football. Yeah, Nick, we knew that. That's mm-hmm. not the point. Mm-hmm. When you're going eleven personnel. It's not when Zacchaeus is in, you're allowed to throw in the football. There's no law that says you can't get him involved. It just, right. the guy's a good football player. That was a fine signing. That, that I blame the coaches on that one. That, that no, was, that was, that to me was tough enough. 100%. All right. Well, we'll see what develops out of there. Uh, Roderick yeah. Johnson as well, still uh, unsigned. He was a backup offensive tackle for the Eagles. Was he on, he was on the practice squad, I believe. Uh, yeah. 53. He's on the 53. He made, yeah. he was on the 53 the whole year? Uh, he definitely was on it for a part of it. I yeah, I, I, I didn't know if he made it the whole year. I couldn't remember. All right. Uh, yeah, he was. In fact, okay. you got it. 22 was almost on the practice squad the entire season. Right. 23, he was on the roster. Yes. In fact, oh, wow. I I forgot he got hurt. Never. He never. He, here's why you said that, because he was on injured reserve. Oh, right. Uh, he got. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Holy smokes. I did yeah. not even realize that. So on your point, I'm glad you pointed this out. Yeah, it, he, he actually never wound up being on the roster because he was on IR. Got it. Got so, it. He, yeah, he's up. He was more of a right tackle. Now, defensively, mm-hmm. Shaq Leonard, it just didn't work out. T- tough deal. He he came in late, and they changed the defense. Zach Cunningham, now, we had heard they had interest, but they have five off-the-ball linebackers already. Sean Bradley's out there who tours Achilles, who would only be play specials anyway. We mentioned Maddox and Avanti Maddox. We mentioned mm-hmm. Roby and Avanti Max uh, out there as Nichols. And th- Justin Evans, man, poor guy. Just you feel for this guy. He just cannot yeah. get out of his own way with injuries. Nope, but you can't bring him back. I mean, you can bring him back on the low and just have him in training camp if you want. But like, there's yeah. no, you know, like you can't you can't sign him like last year to expect him to be and in your top three or four safeties. He just not not healthy enough. Did did he start week one? Did he not start yes. week one? He did. Yeah, that, he did. that was. He, I know he came on late, but man, I know where you're going here. Like that's where how he missed last season. Injury got injured guys, guys with injury histories, older mm-hmm. players. If you want to be a Super Bowl team, you could have one or two of these guys. You can't have five or six of them, or even more. And that's that's got to be cleaned up. And now so far, it's more, it's more some questions with okay, where are these guys at their career? They they're healthy, but Bryce Huff. Can he be a full-time player? We've talked about all this stuff. That that's the that those are the questions now. And then, as Joe Banner told me about uh, their thought process, they love guys with on proven deals who had chips on their shoulder. Who who, who you know, uh, you, Owen Burks, who Cosell talked about, and Zach Bond has really never gotten a chance. So th- these are guys, you know, those are kind of guys I would rather take a shot on rather than guys who've had big injury histories. Hundred percent agree with you on that. And that ties it up for all the uh, the guys that are still out there from last year's Eagles team. We'll see what happens and develops over the next few days before we do this again. In the meantime, everybody enjoy March Madness. Kicks off today. It should yeah. be a, uh, a great time and go Huskies. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. As always, we thank you for flying with us Inside the Birds. Be sure to check out our friends at PHLSportsNation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan is their motto. So make sure you check them out at PHLSportsNation.com and on Twitter at PHLSportsNation.